Lately, I've been trying to think of bigger projects to tackle. Projects that push my skills and help me get better. And I also want to make things that I'll actually use. Making small projects is fun, but I usually don't end up using them ever again, and you end up with a collection of old electronic parts that you don't really know what to do with. And in my last video, I made this solder kit box, and it actually feels really good using something that you've made yourself. As someone who makes videos, a camera slider seems like a handy thing to have. I can use it to take cool shots and make my videos a little bit better and more premium feeling. And so, with a project in mind, it was time to do some shopping and get building. The main part of this build is going to be this 2040 aluminium extrusion. It's nice and sturdy, so the camera will have a solid rail to slide along, and it's also got a good length, which means I'll be able to record some really good footage. I tapped these holes on either side of the extrusion to an M5 off camera, and that's what I'll be using to secure my 3D printed parts onto. I've got a couple of spare NEMA 17 motors from a recent printer upgrade and that's what I'll be using to move the gantry along the aluminium extrusion. And to help control the motor I'll be using this TMC 2209 stepper driver. And to run the whole operation I'm going to use this Arduino Nano. It's small, it's got loads of pins and it's just easy to work with so it's a good choice. There are some other components that I'll be using and you'll see them later on in the video. With all the parts in hand it was time to make a 3D design to see how this is all going to fit together. The design itself is fairly simple and I've taken a lot of inspiration from other machines like 3D printers and CNC's. You've got a main gantry that's supported by four V wheels allowing it to slide across the aluminium extrusion. On one end of the extrusion you've got a stepper motor and on the other you've got a pulley and these are both connected by a timing belt. The camera itself will sit atop the gantry and allow me to take nice smooth sliding footage of my projects. While I was waiting for the 3D printers to finish making all the parts, I decided to make a PCB for this project. For this I used KeyCAD. I started off by making a schematic with all the main components and their connections laid out and then the actual PCB itself. For this project and for the first time I wanted to get a custom made PCB. So I used JLC PCB as an independent customer. And honestly I was really impressed with the whole system. It was really straightforward. All I had to do was export the Gerber and drill files from KeyCAD, upload them onto JLC PCB and the rest was taken care of. The PCB was delivered about 5 days later and given that it was the first time I'd ever had a PCB made I was really curious to see how it was going to turn out and I was really impressed. The PCB looks clean, crisp and it's nice and compact and I'm really looking forward to using this for this project. And so with all of our parts together it was time to get everything assembled. So to start off with I used a few M5 bolts to fix some 3D printed parts onto either end of the extrusion. These parts will house some of the electronics and also act as the feet for the stand to give it some elevation. Then I secured the stepper motor onto one of the 3D printed parts using some M3 bolts. Then a GT20 pulley was secured onto the stepper motor shaft using a grub screw and this will be very familiar if you've ever built or used a 3D printer. This was the part that I designed to house the pulley on the opposite side to the stepper motor. So the way it works is they get fixed into one of the 3D printed parts using some M3 bolts. Then you put the pulley wheel into the middle and then you put a pin through the top to stop the wheel from coming out. It was a fairly simple design but it worked quite well. And then it was time to move on to the gantry. The gantry consisted of the main 3D printed parts, V wheels that were attached to the gantry using some M5 bolts, some M5 nylock nuts and some spacers that came along with the wheels. These two 3D printed parts form a very basic tensioning system that I came up with. The timing belt is fixed onto these parts using a couple of zip ties and then you're able to move them along the gantry to make the belt either tighter or looser.
And once everything was all put together, the gantry was sliding along the extrusion perfectly. Using the really basic tensioning system that I made, I was able to stretch the timing bolt just right so that it wasn't too loose, nor was it too tight. Then it was time to get onto the electronic side of this project. To help the gantry know when it's reached one of the when well, to help the gantry know when it's reached one end of the extrusion, I'm gonna use these limit switches so that when it approaches the end it triggers a limit switch and makes the gantry reverse direction. This will also help in the homing process so that every time the slide is powered on, the gantry moves over to one side and it sets that as a starting position. I made a little cutout on the inside part of the 3D printed stands so that the wires can go through the extrusion and I can have all the electronics housed on one side. And then it was time to start getting everything soldered onto the PCB itself. For some reason I kept having powering issues with the first of these PCBs that I soldered up and I think it might have been due to my design. So I used one of the other PCBs that JLC sent and I used some wires to make sure that each of the components were wired individually rather than in series. Or at least I think that's what I did. But anyway it seemed to have worked, once I did that everything was working as intended. And I was really happy to see that once all the electronics had been soldered up and everything was almost assembled, it was all working as planned. So the gantry was turning on, it was homing, and then I was able to start and stop it using the rotary encoder and also control the speed. So at this point, the only thing left to do was to get the rest of this put together. I'm going to make use of these quarter inch inserts that I picked up as well. And this is a 3D printed part that will go onto the aluminium extrusion using some T-nuts and then one of the inserts here will be used to help me attach the extrusion onto my tripod. And then to attach my camera onto the slider I'll be making use of this standard ball head joint that I picked up from Amazon. Using a couple of T-nuts, I screwed that part with the heated insert onto the underside of the extrusion.
and then I put another quarter inch insert onto the top part of the gantry so that I could attach the ball head joint. Now this is where I started running into problems. As you can see here, when the slider was sitting on the tripod, it was really unstable. And I was worried that with the weight of the camera, it would eventually just fall off. And something similar did happen. I applied a little bit of pressure and the heat set inside actually stripped out of the PET G part on the underside of the extrusion. So I had to think of another way forward here. So what I decided to try was rather than just relying on one point of contact between the slider and the tripod, I'll print out a couple of more attachments and have the tripod and two supporting arms to give the slider a bit more rigidity. So you can see here I had one pet G part in the middle of the extrusion and then one on either side for the supporting arms to go on. And then it was a case of fixing each arm into the underside of the extrusion and then attaching it onto the tripod so we've got three arms of support. So by this point I had the slider firmly sitting on top of the tripod with those two supporting arms and the camera was able to go from one side to the other without toppling the whole thing over. So with everything working as intended it was time to see whether this was actually going to work as a good camera slider so it's time to record some test footage. So all in all, I'm really happy with the way the slider is working. It does the job, it captures really nice smooth footage and it's fairly easy to use. There are a couple of things that I would like to improve on if I were to make this project again or make a second version. Firstly, having to use these two supporting arms with the tripod makes it a little bit longer to set this up so I would like to come up with a more streamlined solution. And secondly, at the minute I'm not able to change the direction the camera is facing as the recording is happening so I would like to incorporate a second stepper motor so that I can record time lapse footage where the camera turns as it goes across the slider. That's possibly an addition for the second version. All in all, I'm glad I decided to make this slider. It's by no means perfect. But now I've got some new equipment that I can use to level up my videos and more importantly I've got some new skills that I can use in the future. Hey guys don't forget to leave a comment down below letting me know your thoughts. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you all next time.